Hey guys, it's Butterlord. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Mage Hunter. Now, you might be wondering, why are you going to talk about Mage Hunter, dude? Mage Hunter didn't win the contest. It didn't win the votes. Ninja Turtle won. And I really want to do the Ninja Turtle build. I'm just not going to do it right now because I'm not at my home computer and I want to do that build right. I want to have Ninja Turtle music in the background. I want to play funny clips, uh, all kinds of stuff. So I'm not going to do that right now, but I will do it as soon as I get home. You guys have my promise. That will be my first build guide when I get back to my real rig. Today, we're going to be talking about Mage Hunter. What is Mage Hunter? Mage Hunter is all about killing mages with an emphasis on the fat guys on horses. Killing horses. Ah, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so, so good. If you guys haven't seen these videos before, a little bit of background. I've got way too much time in this game. I've played every build in the game. I theory crafted and tested everything that you could possibly do in this game. I've played this game to death. I'm going to teach you how to play this build, what this build's good at, what this build's bad at, and at the end, I'm going to do a tier list and explain every aspect of the build. So let's get started. Today, we've got full Sadoan. Full Sadoan. So Sadoan's are actually kind of cracked. They're actually kind of good. Um, a lot of people don't realize, but they have the same strength as a Calard. They have the same strength as a Calard. They have more primary points to play with as well. The only thing they don't have is height, so you lose a little bit of health and you lose a little bit of damage bonus by going full Sedoan. But there's a lot of flexibility here. You are strong as shit. You hit super hard. The other thing that is super nice is it is a very flexible class because it is a human. People don't realize they have the highest strength and the highest potential intellect of any human race or any human played, I guess. So if you wanted to, let's say you got tired of playing the foot version of this build, you could age your character up to 60, get real fat, get your intellect super high, and become a god-tier fat mage, right? So that is something that you can do. But this build that I'm showing you is a footy first. The design is to be very good on horseback and very good on foot so that you can dismount uh, an opponent and then dismount yourself and fight them on foot. Or, you know, there's very there's a lot of flexibility depending on what you want to do, what the situation dictates, right? So we've got strength 115, all that stuff. Main things here, damage bonus, pretty damn high. Health is a little bit low. A standard footy is around 200. You're at 180. Stamina is fine. Mana, you don't have very much, but you have enough to do a lot of lesser heals. You have a good combat speed. Your combat speed is on par with most footies that are a non-Alvaran. And your armor weight is good. It's just a little low, and I'll talk about that here in a second. So action skills, you'll notice that you have a lot of the things that you want for a footie. It is missing defensive stance. It does have aggressive. You could swap that out. I like hitting super hard. I find, you know, a lot of players kind of agree that doing damage is funner than mitigating damage, right? Hitting shit is funner than getting hit, right, generally. So I kind of fall into that category, but you could swap it out for defensive if you're having problems there. Uh, controlled riding at 100, creature controls at 5 for a max level horse. Ecumenicals at 62 for T-Lash. Now, you have such a small mana pool that... I would rarely go offensive. It could be a really good way to secure a kill on either a player or a horse. That flexibility is there, but you don't really need it. On my build, I take this down to 50 if I need points and something else, so I can still have my mana reflect or my mage reflex. Sorry, spell reflect. And you can put that on your horse, and that is super good for dealing with mages. You wouldn't be a really good mage hunter if you didn't have spell reflect, right? You need that utility. You need that ability to take a spell away from them. Some mages, especially dex mages, are stretched so thin on their mana pool that having spell reflect up can really just remove their wind condition, right? A lot of mages need every ounce of mana that they have, and they need to land their skills perfectly to kill you. So removing that capability by reflecting, even reflecting yourself mid-fight, can often remove their win condition, stop them from being able to kill you with magic, which is what a lot of mages do. Now, this, something that is important that I need to talk about is elementalism comes out tomorrow. So things will change there's going to be a lot more damage coming out from mages, projectiles, and stuff like that. Elementalism can't be cast on foot. But that doesn't mean this build is going to be outdated or bad. You're just going to have to kind of adapt, figure out what, what's new, what's different. And I'll be talking about elementalism 
a lot on this channel when that comes out and I'll give guides and everything like that. So you guys are kind of in the loop. I've already got characters prepped and ready for it. So uh, I'll talk about that as we get along. Heavy armor training at 100, mental offense at 100. I have mounted combat at 100, right? I highly, highly, highly recommend using a two-handed sword. I've tried every mounted combat weapon in the game. I've tried lances multiple times. I've tried pull swords, pull axes, everything. By far the best and the easiest is two-handed swords. Specifically, you want heavier two-handed Rizar swords. You want a Cuprum two-handed Rizar sword. That's super cheap, does a ton of damage. Messing two-handed Rizar swords. They are cracked. Super good weapons for using on this build. I have Mount of Majory at 50. Mount of Majory at 50 allows you to keep your horse up in non-pressure situations. It allows you to, once you've dismounted somebody, ride away, reset your horse's HP, and come back into the fight all topped up, ready to bang, right? It's really, really nice for horse health management, right? And until they add the ability to bandage your horse while riding it, which a lot of people have requested, I think it would be OP. I think my personal suggestion is veterinary at 100 should allow you to bandage your horse. That would make mounted combat a lot more viable. But right now, the only way to heal your horse while riding it is to have majory, specifically mounted majory, so that it's not um, totally useless. So we have 50 points in mounted majory, which means your hit spells hit for 75% of their normal power. And you do that on your horse's head as you're riding around. It's a really good way to keep yourself topped up. Taming at 31, because you're going to lose... Your horse out in the wild and this build is a lot better when you have a horse so being able to get your own horses is important if you're a baller and you just buy max level horses you could dump taming and put those points into something else vitalism's at 99 because i ran out of points so i took one point away from that professions i've got basic weapon crafting horse armor crafting um basic soft armor crafting you probably don't want you don't need the soft armor crafting you could put 200 more primary or professions into it to get heavy armor crafting that could be something that you could do and then you could craft your whole kit really you could craft your sword your pet armor and your armor now that's expensive time consuming you know this build doesn't need all that but it's something that you can strive for in the end game to be effective. Down below are a couple different armor suggestions. We got steel, iron fur, steel, blood silk, steel, blood silk, knight or tindramic knight, and then reptile iron fur. Reptile iron fur is your standard everyday. I'm I'm going out the gate by myself, or I'm not doing anything serious. That's just your everyday kit. And then steel blood silk on the tindramic knight can be worn with no heavy armor training trinket or either i think it's either no trinket or like a really small like a two or a three percent uh free armor weight trinket and then the mercenary plate which i prefer requires a slightly better heavy uh free armor weight trinket and then the iron for steel which is the heaviest that you could be putting on requires a really nice uh, free armor weight trink. It's something that you got to save up for and a strive and strive for, but it does provide the best protection. It's something that uh, would be your end game kit on a human, right? You're not an Ogmir. You don't have crazy armor weight, carry weight, um, but you do have the option to put on steel and iron fur, which is really, really good. Iron fur is also way cheaper than blood silk because it comes from trolls and trolls are constantly farmed. So it makes your kits Right? You invest a lot into your front end, getting a really nice trinket for your neck, for the free armor weight, but that allows you to uh, buy cheaper armor sets because iron fur is a lot cheaper than blood silk. So being able to buy iron fur steel sets is way more uh, tenable than blood silk every time because blood silk comes from a boss. Iron fur comes from trolls, which are farmed 24-7 by people all over the place. All right, let's get to the tier list. PVE. This is really not that good at PVE. I'll put this down in E tier. You don't have Akbon to make yourself tankier because you don't have room in your build for Necro. I wish you did. You might be able to dump something else to get the Necro so you can get Akbon, but you're not a very good tank. Mounted combat doesn't really work good against PvE mobs. They still hit you when you ride by. It's not like mounted archery, which is god tier. You don't have pets. 
your healing isn't crazy, you can't go solo trolls, you can't go solo a lot of content. Um, you can clear bandit camps and stuff like everybody else, but I mean, I could do that on a dex mage. It's really nothing special from a PvE perspective. You, this is not something that you roll to go farm a lot with and go kill Tagmatons or anything. You're not going to be able to do all that. It doesn't, this build doesn't work for that, unfortunately. So, well, that's one downside. PvE, you're not good. Fun. Um, I do have this character. Uh, this is currently a character that I'm running. I do have, you know, keep in mind I have five accounts. I find myself logging into this guy a decent amount. It's really fun. I run this guy as a... Uh, I just torch the rep on this guy, so I kill anybody and anything. And I'm back online by running to the nearest horse spawn and getting a cheap-ass sword out of a box. You know, we have houses and infrastructure everywhere, but um, basically any sword. Everybody uses swords, so they're super plentiful. It's not hard to find. Um, I grab that. I grab some regs. I'm back online. I'm back out there having fun, having a good time. It's really fun when you get the value out of your character. Your character is designed to kill mages, specifically fat-mounted mages, which are the meta, right? There's a clip uh, that I can't really edit in here because my computer sucks, of me killing Tatsuya. He was on his mounted mage talking about how he's got, you know, it's the easiest thing in the world being a mounted mage. I bumped into him, he attacked me first, and I killed him in about 20 seconds, right? It's a... Uh, you can see it on, there's another video on my channel that has it. Um, but I take a mounted mage, mounted Ogmir, from full to dead, his horse included, in 20 seconds on this character. And that is really fun. When your build is online, your build is really fun. And uh, talking about kind of the horse killing meta, I have a video that I did a couple of videos back talking about the horse killing meta and mounted combat counters mounted mage. But the downside is mounted archers and arcane archers counter you. So your horse will die in those scenarios because when you're playing this character, you generally want to have a naked horse. And you want to have a high-level desert horse because you need to intercept people. If that's unavailable, you want to have a high-level jungle horse, which is a little counterintuitive. I learned from a uh, shout-out to Ganon who pointed out that the Fourth gear, the sprinting speed, the max speed of a jungle horse is higher than a step horse. So having a high level jungle can actually help you intercept people, even on step horses, a lot better. You have a lower third gear, but who cares? You're trying to fourth gear to connect with people, close the gap. It's really good for that. So when you're getting value out of your kit, it's extremely fun, but there's Definitely going to be times where it's not fun because you're getting dumpstered by your hard counter. And your hard counter is pretty common. Mounted archers are not uh, rare to find. Right? Dueling. Um, it's middle of the road. You have a lot of points dedicated to being a mage. right? Around 250, 270 points or something like that dedicated to being like an actual mage. So dueling, like you don't have defensive stance. You have a lot of points in mounted skills. You're not going to be like the best duelist. We'll put it down in D tier, actually. But you can duel around in town and still learn how to play the game. It's not going to be like the worst thing in the world. 1VX. You know, I'll put this in B tier. You can definitely cheese bad players pretty easily with this. Like, it's really fun doing a drive-by and hitting somebody for 95 damage with your sword and they just like they didn't even know you were coming and you just whap them on the back of their head and take off half their hp that is fun that is a really good time and if you're good you can reset fights dismount somebody reset the fight dismount somebody reset the fight come back in come back in and you can do 1vx's somewhat somewhat not i won't say easily but it's possible it's definitely possible i'd say it's easier than certain other classes 1v1 scenario. I'll put this in C tier. I'll put 1v1 in C tier. 1v1, there's a difference between dueling and 1v1. 1v1 is out in the world fighting to the death. No rules apply. Dueling is like dueling in town. It's like no healing and all that crap. 1v1, is, I'll put it in C tier. It depends on who you're fighting. If you're fighting a mounted mage, this is S+. plus. This is like cracked out of its mind, you're going to dumpster them. There's no chance, right? 
if you're fighting a mounted archer, you're going to get fucking shit on. So uh, I'll just put it in C tier because it really depends on what you're what you're fighting against. Skill cap. Um, skill cap. I always explain. If it's an S, that means it's the easiest thing to play it and get value from. If it's an F, that means it's extremely hard to play and extremely hard to learn. Um, I'm going to put this in D tier. Actually, I'll put this in E tier because there's a lot of aspects of this build that require good game sense. You need to know how a mage works. You need to know how melee works. You need to know how mounted combat works. You need to know how um, what a ma mounted mage is going to do, what his uh, you know his goals are, right? And if you haven't played those before, that takes a lot of learning, right? Right? It's not the most um, easy thing in the world to figure out. So uh, we'll put it down there, right? You're also a human, so you're slower than Alvarin. You don't get to choose your fights against Al Alvarins. They dictate the pace of combat. So you can get punished for having a handicapped build in certain scenarios, for sure. Solo. Um, this is this is a uh, under average, below average for solo play, because of the reasons I've already been talking about. Mostly PVE, right? If you're a solo player, you make your own stuff. You're reliant on yourself. You're farming your own materials, uh, crafting your own stuff. And you can't really do that easily. You have the profession skills eventually to be able to make your own stuff, but you still have to go gather it every time, right? So you can blow up some turtles with the mana that you have, but you don't have enough mana to outright kill a turtle. So you have to finish it off with your sword, which gets you low. Then you don't have anatomy, so you have to bandage yourself up. So like, it can be difficult to play this as a solo player. As... A group player, we'll talk about team fights. I'd say this is up there. This is probably an A tier for team fights because it is a hard counter to what is considered meta right now, which is mounted mages. A mounted mage can really ruin a fight for your team if it if if they have a mounted mage, because it can be extremely difficult to just get them out of the fight, right? They require a lot of action economy to deal with. And this guy, the the mage hunter, can just obliterate them and, obliter and, and obliterate them extremely quickly. So it's really nice having this guy for roams. If you're going to go out on a roam, having a mage hunter is really nice. They can also function as a quasi interceptor, right? Because they can gap close and they can dismount people extremely quickly by killing their horse. So this is really really good for that it's also good for skirmishing um so a pro tip for when you're skirmishing and you know you're going to be in an engagement for a prolonged period of time you want to carry horse armor in your bag generally when you're going around in your day-to-day -day and you're just roaming and looking for fights you want to be naked you want your horse to be naked but you need to have the horse armor in your bags you can just run incisium guard for it because that's generally good enough you don't need to have like the steel or anything crazy you can you just don't need it have some decent horse armor in your bag. If you're getting into a prolonged fight where you're jousting, you're going in and out, and you, it's just going to help your action economy a lot. Having your horse not get shredded for three quarters of its HP every time you go through the through the line, super important. Have the mage armor in your bag so you can slap it on, especially if you're fighting tight quarters, if you're fighting in the jungle and you're constantly going through foliage and around trees and crap like that. Yeah, this is really good. Also, don't be afraid to dismount and fight somebody on foot. This character is pretty decent on foot, right? The one hard counter to your build is trees and foliage and garbage, like rocks and garbage that get in the way of you using your horse's momentum to connect with the opponent. So if you killed their horse, don't be afraid to park your horse a little ways away, charge up a T-Lash and come into the fight and open with a T-Lash and then draw your sword and go into combat. Like, that, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a totally viable tactic. And you should be practicing in town. You should be learning how to parry. You should be learning how to be a good foot fighter first because at the end of the day, most fights end on foot. So being able to have that tool in your arsenal is really good. This build is not meant to stay on a horse forever, Right. You can kill mages from horseback, but what happens when you dismount a footy and you need to fight them? You're not gonna, you're not gonna kill a footy by 
using your sword to cut him down while he's running away. Unless they're trash, right? Most guys will parry you. So that's one big downside of the build is you can easily get parried and anybody that's paying attention can mitigate all of your damage. There's actually a good thread on Reddit right now talking about whether or not mounted combat damage should be parried. I think that some damage should get through. It's ridiculous that you've got a guy on a horse, 900 pounds of meat riding towards an enemy, swinging a two-handed sword, and this little dagger mage barely lifts his dagger and deflects all the damage. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. It's not really balanced. Um, so there could be some tweaks that need to be made there. I'll just say that. Defensively, um, it's C-tier. There's worse things. There's better things. It's not terrible. It's not great. Offensive, again, I'll put this in C-tier. There's definitely better things. There's definitely worse things. And it really depends on who you're fighting. This build, this game can be thought of as kind of a very complex version of rock, paper, scissors. But a lot of that gets grayed out for other builds. There's not many hard counters to a dex mage, where this build definitely has hard counters. But it also hard counters the shit out of some other stuff, mainly mages, right? So it depends on who you're fighting. It's good and bad. Economy... Um, this is F tier for the same reason I talked about. Farming, you can't really do. For this build, if, you know, professions, you know, you can take, and whenever I talk about economy and whenever I talk about crafting, you can kind of take it with a grain of salt. I give my recommendations for if your character, if this is your only character, but realize that you do have a guild that you can fall back on generally most of the, most of you have a guild that you can fall back on and rely on for certain things this is not going to be a good character for that if you if you are playing this character and you want to be self sufficient your professions will be completely eaten up by the build cuz you're a mage and you're a mounted combat guy and you need swords and you're a footy who needs good like good armor you need it just eats all of your professions so you can't do anything that's unique or special, like scribing or anything like that, because you, if you want to be self-sufficient, it eats everything. It eats everything. Uptime, uptime, uptime. Um, I'll put this actually in D tier. There's a lot of points in this build invested into mounted combat, mounted majory, stuff like that. Uh, your mana pool is pretty low, so the additional points for like T-Lash and stuff, sometimes they're online, right? A lot of things in this build are sometimes online, but not always online. So uptime, it's kind of D tier. Crafting, same thing. Put it back down in F tier for the reasons I just talked about. Utility. Utility, this is actually pretty good. Utility, I'll put it up in A tier. It is... Flexible because you have spell reflect, you have healing, you have mounted majory, you have mounted combat, you have a lot of tools to handle different situations. There's just certain situations that are somewhat common, like fighting a mounted archer, that come up and ruin your day somewhat frequently. They're not; it's not rare to bump into a mounted archer. So, I can't put it into the S because you don't have necro, you don't have a lot of different things in this build. Overall, we'll talk about PvP first. PvP, um, we'll put it, it, like I said, it really depends on who you're fighting. If you're fighting a footy, it's probably like C tier. It's very average, right? If you practice and you get good at basic footy gameplay, you can definitely overcome another footy. It's, it's not that difficult. But if you're fighting a mage, right, this is like S plus. This is one of the best builds it is the best build in the game for killing mounted mages right but that alone is not enough to rate it into the s category i would put this in b i think that it's above average but not by much really not by much overall overall i'd hate to, i hate to put a build that i play occasionally in d tier but it's okay in my mind to play a build that serves a very specific niche i'm not the normal type of player i do have a lot of different accounts that i play so i can afford to put 
a little bit more time and effort into a specialized build that I can pull out when I need it, right? So I think this build is D tier. Some people might disagree with me, but either way, um, that's it, guys, right? Thanks for watching. Um, vote on the next poll. See you.